I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. This is the second video in a series of deep dives into troubleshooting Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, or TKG, clusters. The first video focused on Kubernetes custom resources, how cluster API is used to create Kubernetes clusters, and the Tanzu Kubernetes cluster, or TKC, custom resource. In this video, I will drill into the reconciliation of TKC into a set of cluster API resources and their reconciliation into virtual machines configured to form a Kubernetes cluster. When the user submits a TKC cluster specification, the TKG controller generates a set of specifications from which the underlying cluster API resources are created. Let's look at them individually. You will see that Cluster API generally separates generic specification common to all implementations from infrastructure provider specific implementation information. A generic cluster resource is created to hold cluster configuration along with the vSphere specific resource called WCP cluster. Note that WCP stands for Workload Control Plane and is the internal engineering name for vSphere with Tanzu. KubeCTL get on the three cluster objects shows some of the differences. Notice the API version in the names. TKC is using the VMware developed Tanzu API and is where we add any unique decoration to our implementation of a Kubernetes cluster. The cluster object is using the open source cluster API, while the WCP cluster object uses the VMware developed infrastructure API to handle vSphere specific configuration. Let's look at the cluster spec and the WCP cluster spec side by side. The cluster spec holds network configuration and references to other resources that will provide additional configuration. The WCP cluster spec holds information specific to the vSphere implementation, like the control plane endpoint. That endpoint is reflected up into the cluster resource, but this resource is the source of truth. Also note that the WCP cluster status reports on infrastructure-specific items like the network and load balancer, while the cluster reports summary status about the control plane and infrastructure availability. There are some details around a set of custom resources and controllers that generate the virtual IP endpoint that are specific to whether you are using NSX or VDS for networking. I won't go into those here. Specifications are submitted that create the templates for the control plane. Each control plane will have a WCP machine template that holds things like the VM class, the VM image, and the storage policy. KubeADM is a toolkit for bootstrapping Kubernetes clusters, and the KubeADM control plane object holds that configuration for the control plane nodes. Beyond the cluster objects, node-specific resources are created to hold the configuration for what will become each of the nodes in the cluster. Each node has its own set of machine objects. The machine resource holds generic configuration for the node, as well as its status. The WCP machine resource has the vSphere-specific configuration, like VMID, storage class, and VM image. The kubeadm config resource contains the actual kubeadm configuration used to make this machine a Kubernetes control plane node. Things like installing etcd, adding certificates, and bringing up the Kubernetes API. The cluster API and kubeadmin control plane controllers reconcile these objects and ensure that they have all of the configuration information they need. A similar, though slightly different process occurs for the worker nodes. They still get a WCP machine template resource, but will use a machine deployment object to define the many nodes that might be created as workers. Though it's not shown here, there is actually a machine set object that holds the desired state for the set of machines that are created for the worker nodes. Much like the built-in deployment object owns an underlying replica set object, which in turn owns a set of pods, the machine deployment defines the machine set, which in turn defines the set of machines that become workers. Let's look at the machines, WCP machines, and kubeadm config. We are diving down from the cluster level into the definitions of the individual nodes. 
so there is one of each of these resources for each node in the cluster. Let's describe the machine and WCP machine resources to better understand what they do. Within the machine spec, we see that the infrastructure will come from the WCP machine and that the VM will be bootstrapped into a Kubernetes cluster node through the kubeadm config. Notice that the status is tracking the creation milestones for the machine. The WCP machine spec defines the VM class, image name, provider ID, and storage class that will be used to create the VM. The status will hold VM details as the provisioning occurs. Describing one of the kubeadm config resources shows that it holds all of the configuration needed to make the VM a Kubernetes node and join it to the cluster. This includes things like setting appropriate permissions, adding certificates, and authorization keys. The CAPI controller is like the conductor of the orchestra. It reconciles everything except the WCP specific objects, adding the appropriate information each object needs and monitoring its health. The cluster API bootstrap cube ADM controller, CAPBK, takes the cube admin config and converts it to cloud init configuration needed for each node. The cluster API for WCP or CAPW controller reconciles all of the WCP machine objects, both control plane and workers, into virtual machine resources that contain the complete specification for deploying a VM on vSphere. The VM service, also known as the VM operator controller, is responsible for reconciling the virtual machine resources into virtual machines and facilitating the configuration as Kubernetes nodes through cloud init. kubectl get VM shows the VM resources that were created by the CAPW controller. There is one VM resource per machine resource. Describing the controller VM shows that the specification contains everything that the VM operator controller needs to build the API calls to vCenter to create the virtual machine. In addition to information we saw previously in the WCP machine, you also see that the cloud init configuration generated by CAPBK is stored in a Kubernetes config map and will be passed to the VM as extra config for use in turning this VM into a Kubernetes node. This hierarchy of custom resources might seem overwhelming, but the good news is that most of your troubleshooting involves a small subset. In the next video, I will look at basic troubleshooting steps and walk through some actual troubleshooting scenarios. Thanks for watching.